<coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> Nisa Bulaginaka. As you all know, Honorable Rashtrapati Ji is on a three country visit to this region, and Fiji is uh, her first leg. Um, we are happy to announce that it was a very warm and historic visit so far. It has, uh, it has been, it is the first ever visit by uh, Rashtrapati Ji to Fiji and uh, um, we would like to convey our sincere gratitude and appreciation for the gracious hospitality that has been accorded to Honorable Rashtrapati Ji and her entire delegation by the government and people of Fiji. Uh, as you know, India and Fiji share a very special and enduring bond going back almost a century and a half. And uh, India and Fiji have been strengthening our engagements with each other and it has been India's endeavor to strengthen our engagement with the Pacific region as a whole, <clears throat> with bilaterally with the countries of the region and under our action-oriented forum for India and the Pacific Island cooperation, or what we call FIPIC. And uh, Fiji remains our very special partner in, in the Pacific. If you remember, Honorable uh, Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, uh, inaugurated the first FIPIC uh, summit here in Fiji, in Suva. And so it is in this context that uh, the visit of Rashtrapati Ji assumes great significance. Uh, this certainly marks a new chapter as we further boost the strong momentum uh, that has been generated by the increasing level of uh, high-level contacts between our two nations during the past several years, and which was also marked by 75 years of uh, India's diplomatic presence in Fiji. And now going to the elements of the program, as you know, uh, Rashtrapati Ji uh, landed in Suva from Nadi in the morning today. And upon arrival, she was accorded the guard of honor by the uh, Fiji military police, followed by a traditional welcome, um, and which was attended uh, by the prime minister and uh, it was along the way from the airport, it was uh, heartwarming to see hundreds of school children lining the roads and uh, 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 really shouting their greetings uh, to Rashtrapati Ji. That was a very, very uh, moving uh, experience. At the State House, Rashtrapati Ji met uh, the President of Fiji, His Excellency Ratu William Maivalili Kotmanivere. Together they viewed the solarization project of the State House. It was completed by India as part of our development partnership. And the project also reflects uh, India's strong commitment to climate action and climate justice. Prime Minister, His Excellency uh, Rambuka, Sitiveni Rambuka, also called on Rashtrapati Ji along with several of his ministerial colleagues. And they had wide-ranging discussions in which they reaffirm the mutual trust and the strong commitment towards enhancing our bilateral <coughs> relationship for progress and prosperity of the people of uh, both our countries. Um, the president of uh, Fiji also had conferred upon our president the order of uh, Fiji, uh, which was deeply appreciated by Rashtrapati Ji and her delegation. Uh, Rashtrapati Ji then addressed uh, the Fijian parliament in a, in a historic address and had an interaction with the members of parliament <coughs> which further reaffirmed the strong democratic linkages between our two countries. She also paid respects by garlanding the bust of the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, in the, uh, just a little while ago and also placed a wreath at the National War Memorial in Suva. Earlier in the afternoon, the Prime Minister hosted a <coughs> lunch for the uh, visiting Rashtrapati Ji and her delegation. <coughs> a community interaction was also held today where Rashtrapati Ji addressed community members of Indian origin in Fiji and hailed the contribution of Girmityas, recognizing their immense contribution to the growth and development of Fiji and also fostering ties between our two nations. 
I think a large part of our close and long-standing bilateral ties is built on people-to-people -people linkages, and almost a third of uh, Fijian population trace their roots to India, uh, while at the same time they retain their culture, traditions, and language, but with a typical Fijian flavor. Uh, <coughs> Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Biman Prasad also gathered uh, the Indian community uh, event. Uh, Rastrapati ji uh, appreciated the declaration of a national holiday on the occasion of uh, Girmi Divas every year and uh, also the fact that Hindi is now one of the official languages of the Later in the evening, today, uh, uh, President Kotoni Vere will be hosting a reception in honor, in honor of Rastrapati ji. An important outcome of the visit was the formal allocation of the project site for the 100-bedded super speciality hospital to be established in Suva as a Government of India grant in aid projects, which was announced by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji at the <coughs> FIPIC, three, third FIPIC summit in 2023, that is last year. We are confident that this critical infrastructure for public good will bring a paradigm change in the delivery of quality and affordable health care, not just to Fiji, but to the entire Pacific region. Another important outcome of this visit was the allocation of land by the Fijian government for the construction of our High Commission premises and the Indian Cultural Center in Suva. Let me conclude here by saying that Rashtrapati's visit not only reinforces the long-standing friendship between India and Fiji, but also sets the stage for elevating our multifaceted partnership with Fiji to the next phase. Thank you, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to respond. Thank you, sir. Now I open the floor for questions. Oh, look up. Uh, you may introduce yourself before asking the question. <laughs> Any more questions? Sir, my name is Sri Sai. I'm from All India Radio. My question is, sir, what investment opportunities do Indians have in Fiji here? And my second question is, uh, we are mentioning about the people to people connect. So what does the Indian High Commissioner, High, High Commission Office do here so that these relations are continuously you know, fostered and uh, taken forward? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so for the uh, first question, um, as I said, uh, we count upon Fiji as one of our really key partners in the region. Um, going forward, we see a bright future. We are accelerating our um, uh, relations in many, many diverse fields. For example, uh, health is one of them. Uh, in terms of digital public infrastructure, there's a lot of good work that is uh, happening to bring India's uh, digital public infrastructure for, uh, for use in the public administration in, in Fiji for delivery of services, which I think will be a real game changer. Uh, that is another area. Um, uh, tourism is also something that has uh, good potential. I, I was talking to somebody about how now in India we have direct flights to Australia, of course, and also to Bali. So, you know, it's easier for people to travel uh, to India, even though you do not have uh, direct uh, flights. Uh, so these are some of the uh, areas uh, which uh, I think uh, immediately are things that uh, uh, could really benefit the relationship. Another area is uh, education, which is also uh, something that uh, we can look at. Um, in terms of uh, Investment opportunities, uh, I'm sure, you know, tourism is such an obvious area for investments from India. Uh, those of you who have been to India may know 
uh, that we have some of the finest hotel chains in the world. Um, and it's a pity they are not here in Piti. If they were, I suppose, then you would have many more Indian tourists as well. Uh, they have Indian hotels are in many places of the world, uh, not just in our neighborhood, but as far away as uh, in Egypt and uh, you know, um, in, uh, in Europe and elsewhere. So I'm sure that uh, that is an opportunity of investment that is there. Uh, our High Commissioner is here, of course, he will have many more ideas uh, about investment opportunities from India. And uh, as to uh, people to people, he's the best person to brief you on if you have a question about that. But I, uh, from what I know, uh, as, uh, having, as being Secretary East in the Ministry, they do a lot in terms of, uh, you know, uh, scholarships, for example, uh, for people to go and study or train in India in different areas, in uh, traditional medicine, in uh, uh, in uh, promoting yoga, of course, uh, you all know that. And uh, uh, the rest, I will leave him to explain what they are doing. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, to add to uh, what Secretary East mentioned about uh, first the business opportunities, the investment opportunities rather, and then I'll go to the diaspora sector initiatives. Uh, in terms of investment opportunities, it's very obvious because uh, more than 40% of the country's GDP comes from tourism sector alone. As Secretary mentioned, I mean, it has tremendous potential for attracting investment from India. And uh, we are aware uh, of, uh, like, you know, I mean, uh, the requirement in terms of the capacity in the tourism sector. And I'm happy to state that uh, just a couple of months back, uh, when we had facilitated the visit of uh, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. William Kavoka, who is also the Minister for Civil Aviation and Tourism, we had set up uh, expressly meetings with these uh, top Indian hospitality groups like the Taj and the Oberoi. Uh, I understand the discussions are you know, currently on the way. Uh, so we'll be hoping to see some you know, uh, Indian interest you know, fructifying here. Uh, with regard to other opportunities, uh, again, like you know, I see a lot of opportunities in the digital you know, I mean, uh, sector. I mean, uh, we are not going to be just limited by the engagement in the diaspora side. We want to get it to the next stage, like you know, the knowledge era, and especially in that regard, digital partnership is something which we are keenly focusing on. And uh, again, I, it's a happy coincidence that there's also a lot of interest from Fiji, considering the expertise and, and the way we have been leveraging digital technology in India to transform both, uh, like, you know, I mean, uh, improve both uh, ease of living as well as the ease of doing business. There's a lot of interest from Fiji also to do you know, I mean, uh, things with us in the digital cooperation side. So discussions are underway and perhaps uh, we'll be able to announce something soon. Uh, with regard to the diaspora-centric initiatives, I mean, as uh, was mentioned uh, by, his, uh, uh, by Sir, uh, by Secretary East, uh, recent years we have seen uh, unprecedented kind of, you know, I mean, number of high-level political exchanges which have solidly put us on a very strong trajectory, you know, as far as our, uh, you know, uh, multi multifaceted partnership is concerned. But parallelly, we are also you know, aware that like you know, Fiji being a major diaspora country, uh, it is important to engage with all stakeholders, including the government of Fiji and uh, the diaspora organizations, the community organizations here, to uh, further nourish and strengthen the you know, unique cultural linkage that we have. So uh, whether it is in terms of like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, celebrating the 12th World Hindi Conference, the historic uh, no, event, a global event that we did jointly with the government of uh, Fiji last year, or uh, the ongoing efforts to uh, re revive and restart the teaching of uh, Tamil language here uh, in Fiji, in partnership with the uh, Ministry of Education, Government of Fiji, and uh, a leading diaspora community organization, Sangam, uh, or uh, like uh, uh, celebrating uh, the or commemorating the uh, Give Me the Legacy, or uh, even, I mean, uh, reconnecting the <coughs> diaspora youth back to the land of their ancestors. Uh, we have been uh, no, uh, actively working on that. In fact, uh, on this program called No India Program, which is meant for the Indian diaspora youth from around the world, I'm happy to state that Fiji is the country which uses the highest number of slots in the entire mm -hmm. world. And that is a credit to uh, the you know, I mean, keen interest that is shown by the diaspora community here in you know, getting connected back to the roots. Also, I mean, uh, we have uh, the privilege of you know, I mean, working with many other diaspora community organizations, and there are a number of you know, opportunities which we have to you know, engage with them and strengthen this linkage. For example, we did uh, we were part of the historic uh, centenary celebrations of the Samabala Gurudwara Sahib here, the oldest you know, Gurudwara in the entire you know, Pacific. 
and uh, we would be uh, shortly doing something with the centenary celebrations in uh, the Hovels Road Sangam Temple. <coughs> so these are you know, initiatives that are going on around the year. In fact, even during uh, the uh, historic Pran Pratishtha ceremony in uh, Ayodhya, perhaps this is the only country where our cultural center had got a cultural group right from Ayodhya, and we did our own, like, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Utsav, uh, Ram Lala Utsav here throughout the country to make sure that, like, you know, I mean, the people of Indian origin do not miss out on that historic opportunity. So this is something which we are uh, keenly aware of and we are very focused on. And uh, this will continue. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that, uh, as I was telling our friends a couple of days back, the best is yet to come in, in, in as far as uh, the relationship with Fiji is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, my name is Vivek Patel. I'm from Delhi News. Uh, so, two days back, we got a chance to speak with the Deputy Prime Minister of Fiji, Mr. Bhiman Prasadji. Uh, he highlighted uh, two uh, uh, places where he wants to engage with India. First is tourism, and in tourism sector, he specifically highlighted of promoting Fiji as a wedding destination. And he categorically said that he wants India to engage with Fiji in this particular aspect. And second, he uh, said that he also wants India to engage with Fiji on uh, agriculture. They want more agricultural cooperation. Uh, so, sir, are there any plans in the near future? Go ahead. See, I think uh, tourism we've already discussed, you know, what is the potential and what can be done. Uh, unfortunately, the number of Indian tourists coming to Fiji, a major tourist destination, is very, very low. Last year, I believe the total number of tourists that came to this country was about 929,000. Uh, but I understand right from India, I think it was like, you know, hardly a few thousand. So, so that is, of course, like, you know, I mean, it's become the world's largest market and the fastest growing market. So it, it uh, would certainly be logical for uh, the stakeholders on this side, whether it is uh, the tourism companies or uh, uh, Fiji Airways and uh, no, other stakeholders to look at the Indian market to connect them better, to give them assured and uh, regular connectivity. Because that is one major stumbling block which we see in getting Indian tourists from, uh, no, from mainland to from India. So once I think those issues are uh, no, I mean, uh, set right, no? the connectivity, I think then automatically you will see. Because Indians are one of the uh, fastest growing markets and also one of the highest spending tourist routes around the world. So that is uh, more up to the Fijian stakeholders to uh, look at how they will engage with the fastest market. The other one about uh, the agriculture part, uh, we are strongly engaged in agriculture. This is one of our uh, core areas where we are focused you know, for many, many decades. Even now, as I speak, I mean, there is an Indian expert. Perhaps the only plant pathologist in the entire South Pacific is a Government of India deputy officer. She is working with uh, the Shogakim Research Institute of Fiji. Uh, this is an Indian expert funded by Government of India. Uh, so uh, there are a number of you know, I mean, uh, people I mean, like that. We had also just a month or two back sent a delegation of uh, Fijian farmers to India uh, to learn uh, you know, the best practices visit the research stations and uh, to uh, no, I mean, uh, see how best they can adapt the technology to further develop the agricultural sector here. But we remain open to doing more. Agriculture is one area where I see a lot of potential here in Fiji and uh, we would be happy to go by the uh, requirements from the Fijian side. As was mentioned uh, during uh, the remarks earlier, I mean our development partnership is very unique because it's totally de demand driven. What is the priority and at what pace you are comfortable that is how we go. So we would wait to hear I mean, from our reference here to uh, know about what is the priority area, and then we will accordingly partner with them to build a stronger and resilient agricultural sector. Last question for me, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, are there any plans of Uh, this is, of course, a uh, subject that has come up again and again in conversations. Um, as you know, um, this in India now we have uh, all the airlines are private, and privately held. These will really be commercial decisions uh, that they will make. Um, but certainly, in so far as uh, pointing out the opportunities are concerned, uh, we will uh, uh, point uh, to the airlines that uh, there are 
significant opportunities for tourism uh, with Fiji. We'll be happy to work with your uh, High Commission in Delhi you know, to promote uh, tourism. <coughs> I was talking to your High Commissioner who's here for the visit and he was saying how uh, there is so little awareness about Fiji outside the big cities, you know, so uh, in Delhi of course people know but you know if you go to other cities maybe they're not so aware how to get to Fiji, uh, what is there that is an offer. They know that Fiji is a close partner country of India and the Pacific. They know that it has a large uh, population of uh, Indian origin, but apart from that, they don't know about the beauty of the place or you know the facilities, uh, the lovely hotels that you have, uh, which is not really well known. So I think we can certainly partner with your High Commission in promoting uh, Fijian tourism to Fiji. Uh, I have another question, sir. Uh, as you have mentioned, the focus of the Indian President of Fiji uh, at the signing of the. Uh, So we discussed uh, the broad uh, areas that I mentioned, uh, which is health sector, uh, which is not just only the uh, issue of the hospital uh, that we are building, but also in terms of uh, uh, implementation of the Indian pharmacopoeia, the recognition of the Indian pharmacopoeia, uh, the, um, uh, the availability of uh, um, inexpensive but world-class um, you know, generic medicines uh, from India which will really help. It's already helping the Fijian uh, health sector but it could, it could do more. Uh, so that is one whole area. And the other area is I mentioned about the digital public infrastructure which uh, can also be a game changer both in terms of uh, creating you know, s uh, startup environment in Fiji for example for uh, for uh, the entire digital uh, space and also in the delivery of uh, public goods uh, to, to the people. So these are, these are some of the area, large areas that we discussed. You know, as the High Commissioner mentioned, uh, our development partnership is very much demand-driven and whatever Fiji government and the Fijian people want, uh, we'd be very happy to look at that and see how we can contribute to that. At the moment, I can't say that we have any direct uh, uh, cooperation in the uh, drug issue, the drug problem, but uh, if, uh, I mean, we have issues uh, back in our own country, so we have uh, some tools to deal with it. So if uh, you know, Fiji feels that they need, require some assistance in that, we'd be very happy to look at it. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. I'm Bula, you are with Fiji. I'm with you from Fiji, right? I've got uh, just two questions for you, sir. Um, just now you mentioned about uh, the exchanges being demand-driven. Uh, my first question would be around medical tourism, given that a lot of high number of Fijians are traveling to India for treatments and all. How can this be further strengthened? And my second question would be around uh, sports and cultural diplomacy uh, between the two nations. Uh, I've got, uh, give two examples, as, uh, in particular the sports diplomacy bit that our greatest sevens player is now your national coach mm -hmm. for sevens. And uh, in terms of cultural exchange and diplomacy, uh, We've had the uh, recent visits of Bollywood stars like Rahul Pritz Singh and uh, Jackie Bagnani, and then previously we had Ileana De Cruz who came here as an ambassador. So just your thoughts and comments, please. Mm -hmm. um, 
As far as medical tourism is concerned, uh, we have tried to make uh, things easier um, for uh, tourists. We have e-medical yes. visas, so electronic uh, medical visas are available. So uh, that makes it much easier and the smoother process. You don't have to go in person. Uh, you arrive there and you get your visa stamped uh, on your passport. So that is certainly something. And then there are in large Indian uh, hospital groups which have also come to Fiji to uh, acquaint uh, the people about what are the facilities that are available. In fact, just before I left, one large group also uh, approached me to, in, to brief me about what they are doing uh, in offering their services um, for medical tourists from, from Fiji. So I think that is one area where uh, uh, there is a lot of potential because um, we have people from, you know, uh, from as far away as, uh, from the Philippines, which is not too far away from you, um, uh, who travel to India uh, from the Pacific, some of the Pacific Island countries as well, like Palau, for example. Uh, they go to India for, uh, for the treatment, not because it is uh, um, uh, inexpensive, but uh, mainly because it is uh, very good and also inexpensive. So even if they have to uh, travel by air, even if they have to go and stay there, they still find it uh, a better package uh, than what alternatives they have. As far as uh, sports diplomacy is concerned, yes, I think we kind of talked about it. The uh, president uh, did mention about uh, our na national coach. And uh, uh, if I may let out a secret, uh, can I let out a secret? Her son-in-law is a rugby player, so you know she she knows rugby and she uh, she is interested in the subject. So I think that is another thing that is binding us to the, uh, together at the moment, India and Fiji. Um, so uh, she did mention that uh, maybe one day, uh, we are not as good as you yet, but maybe one day we will be able to have a match between us. <laughs> Let's look forward to that. There will be, there'll be some technology transfer from Fiji to India. Mm -hmm. We and look forward to that. Just on, um, and we also have our Roy Krishna, the national captain, doing quite well with the He's Indian playing in the Indian now. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yes, yes, he plays Are there any opportunities for Indian football clubs or the national team to go here? Yeah, certainly. Why not? Yeah, that could be a good idea. Thank you. So there are two kinds of things. Firstly, I would say that uh, without hesitation that I think uh, in India today we have one of the most uh, ambitious uh, um, clean, re clean energy and renewable energy programs in the world. We have uh, a target we ha of about 500, more than 500, uh, um, uh, giga 500 uh, billion gigabytes, uh, gigawatts. Uh, and that is really a combination of solar and wind and other forms, biodiesel being one, which will really change the, uh, uh, the atmosphere, literally and figuratively speaking, in India with regard to energy and pollution. Uh, so that is one. And uh, the other is that we are working with you, we are working with countries like you, in uh, how to uh, harness uh, renewable energy uh, for your needs. So, you know, today, uh, for example, the president uh, uh, toured the uh, government house where the solar uh, facilities, uh, solar panels have been installed and how it is now uh, powered with solar energy. Uh, similarly, we have trained uh, 
you know, what we call solar mamas, you know, in the, in the in all over the Pacific Islands, not only in the Pacific Islands, in the Caribbean, in Latin America, uh, these are uh, basically grandmothers uh, in their respective villages who uh, install solar kits and they are trained to do that uh, and they are trained to maintain those solar kits for their individual villages so that uh, they can harness energy where they don't have any access to uh, energy. So these are just two examples of uh, what uh, we have been doing. Um, <clears throat> we are, uh, and uh, I must say that I have seen in my own eyes how over the last uh, decade or so, the government's uh, complete attitude towards <clears throat> climate change and uh, the need to address climate change uh, has undergone uh, a complete uh, revolution. Um, today, there we have the Prime Minister has announced uh, a program called uh, LIFE, you know, basically it is uh, to livelihoods for the environment. So how um, lifestyles for the environment, which is how every individual by his own actions, by his or her own actions, by his or her own, own attitude towards how to, the energy is used, can influence how the planet responds to the crisis that uh, we are facing. So I think uh, you will find in India a very uh, uh, sympathetic and as well as a very active partner in how you address uh, climate change issues that are really affecting uh, Pacific Island countries in a very big way. Mm -hmm. Sure, please. With your permission, I'll just like to add uh, one another uh, you know, I mean, uh, project which we are doing. This is a specific area. We know that you know, I mean, uh, climate change is an existential issue in the Pacific. Uh, but uh, not many people, I'm sure, uh, are aware that like, you know, one of the most innovative projects here in Fiji that is happening right now is being funded by the government of India. This is the parametric micro insurance uh, product that was launched for the first time in uh, Fiji. It was piloted very successfully in 2021 and now it has been scaled up and uh, when it is fully completed it will be covering about 5,000 households. The most marginalized section of the Fijian households, 5,000 of them will be covered under this and this was launched, the scaled up version was launched in October last. Uh, sir, under this, I mean, uh, the trigger for uh, getting the insurance claim, I mean, uh, it, uh, it becomes much more easier. They don't need to kind of individually kind of do it like in the conventional sense. So if there is a climate event happening in a particular area, I mean, they don't need to meet any other threshold. So people who are covered under this micro insurance uh, facility, they need to pay, I think, hardly a dollar a day. But they are assured of minimum coverage and trigger, as I said, the threshold is very low. And this is being done uh, in partnership with the UN agencies. The UNDP is a partner here and it is happening. Uh, we had launched it in the, in the Western Division in uh, Nauwa area, in Tauwa area, near Ba. And it's successfully you know, being implemented on the ground as you speak. There are other programs also. I mean, it will be like, you know, I mean, too many to list out. Uh, the Secretary was talking about <coughs> the solarization of heads of state residents uh, that uh, I mean, Honorable President visited even today in the State House. In fact, uh, this is supposed to be done in each of the state of, uh, head of the state residences around the Pacific. But in Fiji, we have already done it for the President's House. We have done it for uh, uh, the, uh, the residence of uh, the Chief of the Kambona Presidency in Bao Island. And we have also done it for the Great Council of Chiefs Hall and uh, very soon we'll be also commissioning one for the official residence of the Prime Minister. And this is not just only for demonstrative purpose. We have also gone to the ground and we have already solarized like about uh, 350 houses, Fijian houses, in the rural areas under the solarization program. And uh, as Secretary was mentioning, people also have been trained under the Solar Mamas program <coughs> so that it is self-sufficient. There is no need to kind of you know, constantly be dependent on some other partner. So, this is working successfully even now. There are many more, I mean, that are under discussions in this area as well. Thank you. Can you just add more on that subject? Um, um, the Pacific has been uh, home to a lot of uh, uh, of power suffering and exploited. I think the Pacific, that's what uh, reports are saying. Maybe you can tell us what is uh, the actual position of India in the Pacific. 
Well, I would uh, prefer to keep this conversation about India and Fiji <laughs> and India and the Pacific uh, Island countries. But since you've asked, let me just say that um, and what the President has also conveyed, Rashtrapati Ji has conveyed to the leadership in Fiji that, um, you know, India is always for a peaceful, stable, prosperous Pacific. Um, it is, uh, we, in our view, it should be an area where uh, nobody imposes their will uh, on another country, where uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty are respected, and where every nation is an equal. So that is our philosophy. Thank you, sir. And I see uh, no more requests uh, for questions. So, sir, with your uh, permission, uh, now I conclude this, this special media briefing. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, and this briefing is over. Thank you for your interest and all your questions. <laughs>